Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the vlog. It is Saturday. I'm starting the vlog off on a very weird day, but the last couple of days I have been like Thursday through, you know, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I have just been sleeping and trying to catch up on sleep and prioritizing time in different ways to get some personal projects done. If you guys saw the video that went up last Friday instead of a vlog, I will link it up in the eye for you guys. I never know what side the eye is gonna be on. But in the eye somewhere, there will be the video that I put up. It is about having anxiety and dealing with anxiety before it gets really bad. And that was something that I was prioritizing over the last couple of days. So there wasn't really anything to vlog. I <clears throat> worked the whole time, went to the gym, came home, slept, you know, the normal stuff that happens when you are just... I don't know, like focusing on you and purely like the physical and mental needs that you have, not necessarily reading or, you know, anything exciting, nothing exciting really happened. So today I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about what I'm reading because according to Goodreads, I'm reading like 11 things right now. I'm gonna grab my phone real quick and kind of go over you, go over, go over you, go over with you guys what is currently on my currently reading list because it's quite a few things. Give me one second. So yeah, like I said, according to Goodreads, I am reading so many things right now. I, I don't know. Let's see. I am currently reading. Let's talk about the ones that I am like focusing on. So I am reading Bloom. I'll put a picture of it here. I don't know where my copy is right now. I think it's in my purse, but I don't know where that is. I'm really liking it. I'm about halfway through it. It's a very easy read. It's about our main character Ari and he is trying to join a band and he's trying to get out from underneath his parents. His parents really need his help because his older sister just got married and they own like a bakery and there's a young man who moves to town and Ari kind of tries to get him to take over his place when he leaves and from what I know this is sort of a little bit of a love story which I'm really excited about and I am really liking it. And the other thing that I am reading that I'm like focusing on is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. This is a book that Natalie from Pages and Panels, I will list her channel down below. She, when I borrowed 99% Mind from the library, she said, okay, well you might not like that, but I promise you will like The Hating Game. And from what I've heard, like even a customer slash friend of mine came in last night and she was telling me that she really enjoyed The Hating Game and that I need to read it. And so I'm reading that right now as well. I think I'm like 10% of the way through it. I started it last night. And the other thing that I'm reading is my most anticipated read. I am just dying to have this and I'm so glad. I got approved for an arc from NetGalley and it is Where I End and You Begin by Preston Norton. Preston Norton wrote the Neanderthal Opens the Door to the Universe, that book that I gush about all the time, and I am just so excited to be able to read this one because what happens is our main character likes a girl. And he has a best friend who is nemesis with the girl he likes best friend. So there's, you know, two sets, two girls, two guys. And what happens in the town that they live in, there is like a solar eclipse every year and it's like a big deal. And our main character goes to ask the girl that he liked, her name is Imogen, out to prom. And when that happens, him and Imogen's best friend trade bodies, like they trade places in their bodies and then suddenly it's gone again. And from what I've heard from this novel is they trade places quite frequently and our main character starts to realize that he likes being in the body of Imogen's best friend. So I'm Assuming there's some sort of like trans rep in this as well, I'm not 100% sure. Preston does a really good job just as like a human being in general speaking about those kinds of things, so I feel like it's gonna be a really enjoyable novel either way. Reading it, I am about 7% of the way through it. I think I started it last night when I got my email. I was trying to get it to download to my Kindle, but I was like at work and it was a huge pain in my ass, but I finally figured it out after downloading it, I think like seven times to my Kindle on accident. So I didn't get to read a whole lot of it last night and then when I came home I just like immediately went to bed. But reading it, the humor is still there, the self-deprecating humor. It's just, it's very funny. Our main character is also like, he has sleep insomnia like he does not sleep and in the beginning of the book he actually passes out and it's just it's very funny and like I said it has the humor it has the characters it has the heart and the soul in it and I think I'm really gonna like it because of that but those are the books that I'm currently like really focusing on other books that I'm reading save the date I actually ended up DNFing I just didn't really love it I might revisit it later to finish it but I, I read like 70% of it and was so mind-numbingly bored that I didn't want to finish it. I'll probably either finish that one eventually or pick up more Morgan Matson instead. 
Um, the other book that I'm reading is Love, Life, and the List by Casey West. I just finished Lucky in Love by Casey West and I really enjoyed it. So I don't know what Love, Life, and the List is about other than there are our main characters. She is in love with her best friend. There's like a group of like three or four of them that always hang out. One of them goes away for the summer and her and her best friend are kind of left at home together. And she has spoken her feelings to him before and he did not reciprocate them. And then they kind of just made it into a joke and started like ignoring kind of what happened. So I'm excited to see sort of how that blows up in their face because it's gonna blow up in their face, I'm sure. That's the only other book that I am currently reading. Um, which I'm liking. It's, it's cute enough. So it's definitely an enjoyable read. <clears throat> but yeah, that's going to be it for this update. It is almost three o'clock or it might already be three o'clock. It's 2.46 and I need to get ready to go to work, unfortunately. It is another work day. So yeah, that's going to be for this update. Welcome to the vlog. I am sorry if this week's vlog sucks, but I said I was definitely going to get one up this week. So even if it's just a bunch of me updating you guys here, I know you'll appreciate it anyway, because all of the vlog footage from last week, I just threw away because I was feeling some type of way about the content. So yeah, either way, you're going to get a vlog this week and I hope you like it. But that's going to be for this update. I will see you guys probably tomorrow with more of what I'm reading and what I'm thinking of everything. I hope you guys can hear me over my heater. If you can't, I'm really sorry, but it's cold. It's cold out again in Ohio, but welcome back to the vlog. It is Monday. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon and I needed to talk to you guys because, oh my God, I am selfishly ignoring all of the other books on my TBR and currently reading The Hating Game. I'm gonna go ahead and blame Natalie from Pages and Panels. I'll list her channel down below. I borrowed, as you guys saw from my TBR, 99% mine, I think is what it's called. And she messaged me and said, a lot of people don't like that book, but please, please, please read The Hating Game and tell us what you think of it because, you know, I wanna know, I want you to love it. And so I started reading it, got completely hooked, Jesus Christ, I am so into this story and I obviously am not the only person apparently it is a really really well-loved book But I didn't think I was gonna love it as much as I am and I'm feeling it on like a very Personal level I was reading it at work and I was actually snapchatting her and talking to her about it Like I was at like a really sexy part. It was like bright red like reading it at work like getting a little you know a little hot um, And I was like messaging her like I'm at work and this is crazy and I love this book and I wanted to come home and finish it last night because it is literally I'm not kidding you Friday into Saturday. I read nothing Saturday into Sunday. I read nothing. I really only read last night I've been feeling kind of a reading slump coming on and I feel like this book is gonna kick me out of that reading slump It is just done so well. The characters are really I don't know like very different like I don't know, Shortcake, as he calls her, like our main character, her name is Lucy, and or Lucinda, and I really like her. I think that she's badass, but also really feminine and sensitive at the same time, and I think that's a really hard balance to achieve, but they do a very good job of doing it, and I just, I'm really, really loving the story, and I feel like Josh as a character is really interesting as well, like, he's kind of a bit of a dick, like, obviously, but their little, like, love that's, love that's happening, it's more lust at this point that is happening, is really... I don't know like it's very intense but there are times in the story where it's very tender at one point in time Lucy does get sick and he ends up taking care of her and it's a very weird scenario but to see him in that light like the balance of this story the ups and downs like the really intense relationship that they have at work and then the tender moments that they have is really cool to read I feel like the dynamic of that is really really awesome so I'm truly loving it but like I said that is the only thing that I've read over the last like three days and I'm super busy today so I don't know if I'm gonna get to finishing it. I have two videos that I need to edit. I need to go to the gym. I need to clean my fucking office. Like if you could, I'm just gonna show you. So this is from filming. I have just all my books everywhere and then my desk is a mess. It's like covered in stuff and I have like dirty clothes over here. I need to do laundry. I need to meal prep. I need to send um, a book out. I need to just there's so much that I need to get done today and I'm like drowning in my adult responsibilities. Can I be 16 again please when I literally did nothing and took it completely for granted? Um, but yeah, that is going to be it for this update for today. I might try to update you guys later tonight. But like I said, I'm really just working and going to the gym and hanging out and doing whatever. Um, I did put up a thing on Twitter, which you guys should leave me suggestions here for this as well. But I asked videos that you guys want to see from me. Now it can be anything. It can be clothing i think i'm gonna do like a geeky clothing i own kind of like lookbook thing i want to do like a tattoo diary even though 
everybody's been asking me for it but honestly I fucking hate almost all of my tattoos the only two tattoos that I truly love are well I like my chest piece and then I like my hands but other than that I'm not really proud of them but I am gonna film it I know people want to see um, somebody suggested top five favorite people you want to punch in the face I'm gonna convert that to characters I want to punch in the face somebody asked me for favorite animes favorite shows favorite movies favorite video games let me know down below in the comments videos that you want to see and it can be literally anything I'm going to make 2019 just the year that I branch out and include a ton of different stuff because I feel like often we as creators or just as people kind of get stuck in this bubble so I, I feel like a lot of people have experienced this when you find something new that you're really into and you want to experience it you feel kind of odd talking to your friends or people who know you about it because one you kind of sometimes feel like a sham like you're not really into those things because you just discovered them whatever um, or like when it comes to content creating I feel like a lot of people feel like they need to shove themselves into this bubble so what tends to happen and I've seen this happen with so many people that I used that I like started YouTube with we all kind of had a bunch of people that started around the same time we did a lot of people fizzle out because they try to limit themselves and really when you think about it people came here for you people want to see your shining beautiful gorgeous face and they don't care if you're talking about books you're talking about your plants your pets you know what you do in your city videos video games whatever it might be they just want to see you so that's something I definitely want to focus on in 2019 so let me know down below anything that you guys would like to see me film um, it would be a lot of fun I feel like to just give you guys content that you really really want and even if my views go down if I'm making content that people enjoy and you know like the subscribers that I have the more that they want to know I'm gonna keep filming that kind of stuff I just I don't really like YouTube for me is fun like I have a nine not I'm saying nine to five but I have like a three to three that pays my bills and I just want to film what you guys want to see so yeah let me know down below videos that you want to see and on that note now I'm gonna go grocery shopping now I'm gonna go get my day in order and I love you guys and I will see you in my next update which will probably be hopefully tonight maybe not probably tomorrow morning see you guys then hello good morning oh my camera's about to die really quick update it is like 1 15 in the afternoon I just got up I went to bed pretty late um but yeah, as you guys are going to tell from this vlog, the vlog is moved to Monday instead of Friday because I work a crap ton next week. Like I work Monday, which is the day that I normally have off. Um, I'm off Tuesday, Wednesday, so hopefully I'll be able to film stuff, some stuff then for the rest of the week. But I wanted to hop on real quick and talk to you guys about what I finished over the last couple of days. So I finished The Hating Game and absolutely loved it. I knew I was going to, but I really did love it. I'm going to give it five stars. I think the characters are phenomenal. The dynamic is phenomenal. I think the writing style was done really well. It was a bit choppy in places, but definitely not enough for me to really even mind or notice a lot. So I feel like as a debut novel, novel, as a day novel it was done really really well and I did really like it I'm excited to read 99% mine although I've heard that people were really disappointed by that because the setting was a little bit odd because it takes place like in a cabin and I don't know I've just heard weird things about it the other book that I finished was Bloom. You guys know I'm reading this for the Panels Book Club. I think the Panels Book Club is going on a hiatus for a little while because Natalie is getting ready to graduate. She's dealing with all of that, so very understandable. So this might be the last one that I read for a little while from the Panels Book Club, but I will leave the club down below and you guys can kind of follow along if they do go on hiatus don't but I really liked this I thought that the relationship was really adorable I thought that you know it's a comic so it's kind of hard to judge but I really like the art style in this I think it's very beautiful I like the dynamic between our main character Ari and his parents I really like the main character and the dynamic that he has with his friends that's kind of a really weird relationship as well um, but I did really really like it I'm gonna give it four and a half stars the only reason is because there were certain parts of it that just felt very rushed like when the actual relationship um, starts there was just some things about Ari that didn't really I don't know it didn't it wasn't believable to me which is hard to feel that way I guess because it's a comic book but yeah four stars for me um, and then the other book that I started yesterday is Deceived this is the next for the Old Republic books that I am reading I'm not very far I am 19 pages into it I did not know that Malgus had a Twi'lek lover 
I did not know that. It's really funny because the character that I play um, from the video game is actually has a Twi'lek lover. So it's it's kind of like, I don't know, like she's not really my slave in the video game, but she's definitely Malgus' slave in the book. But I really like her. I think that she's, I don't know, like, she's funny. She's like the, the, the like, light to the dark in this because she wants Malgus to stop doing what he does or at least calm down doing what he does because she wants a different life for them like she genuinely loves him and that's a very interesting dynamic to read in a book <laughs> considering it's Malgus and I know a lot about Malgus like later on but I don't know a whole lot about him like how he really becomes Malgus so we'll see if we get any of that backstory in this book that's what I'm really really looking forward to but yeah that's gonna be the update for today i'm going to try to update you guys a little bit later like i said my camera is dying and yes this vlog is going up on monday instead of friday but i want something to I, I think I just need to move around my schedule a little bit again. I was doing vlogs on Friday, but they're not doing as well as the ones that do on Monday because I feel like a lot of people really sit and read on Mondays or sit and watch vlogs on Mondays and not really on Fridays. Friday is like the get out and do stuff day, so I feel like vlogs probably do a little bit better on Monday because of that. But yeah, I do have well, one other announcement actually. I'm going to BookNet Fest in September in Florida. I have decided to fly because it's a two hour flight as opposed to a 14 hour drive. And I can't decide which thing gives me more anxiety. Dr sitting in a car for 14 hours would probably kill me, but also flying is like the biggest, the thing that I'm the most afraid of. And I've stopped trying to say that to myself because I used to love flying and it's a two hour flight and I can do it. And I'm trying to like, convince myself that I love flying again but I am going with my mom because my mom is literally my best friend and when I was telling her about wanting to go she was like oh my god like we're gonna go together and we're gonna go hopefully to Universal we'll see if we're able to swing it but yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun but I wanted to let you guys know that because if you're considering going to BookNet Fest you can go and you can see me and we can meet because there's a lot of people that on Twitter were like oh I'm going now <laughs> like so if I wanted to put it out here too as well if you're going to BookNet Fest I will be there come get your hugs I'm a hugger so expect hugs from me but yeah that's gonna be it for this update I am going to I don't know relax maybe try to relax we'll see i gotta go to work but i love you guys and i will see you in the next update good morning it is saturday morning i actually am sitting down real quick <clears throat> to do a little bit of a reading update the only book that i read yesterday i know i downloaded so many more on my kindle from the library it's not even funny what is wrong with me i have four books left for my tbr i have 99 percent mine all the Ugly and Wonderful Things, Winner of the Witch, and Reaper at the Gates, I will leave wherever the hell it goes, <laughs> um, the video that I did for my TBR for the month of March. But of course I downloaded more books, and I'm reading books that weren't necessarily on my TBR. I got a couple of arcs from NetGalley, but the only thing that I read yesterday was Deceived. I read like 60 pages of that. We were really <clears throat> busy. <clears throat> wow, I cannot talk. Where's my water? We were really busy at work and it was like a weird day where we'd slow down a little bit and then we'd pick back up really quickly and it's super annoying when those days happen because you can't just like sit down and read and like focus on what you want to focus on. There's usually we're pretty busy but there's like an hour lull that you can read a lot or you know like somebody will kind of take the lead like sometimes when my coworkers are doing homework I'll answer phones or sometimes I'll get really into a book that I'm reading and people kind of notice and they start answering phones like it's like a give and take at work. But we didn't have any of that shit yesterday, so I actually had to like be on guard the whole time because what tends to happen is I'm not one of those people that can like, or I am one of those people who can read and then be interrupted and then continue reading, but I found myself rereading the same shit over and over again yesterday, so I did have to stop after a while to just like not be interrupted because it was actually really bugging me. But I came home do a little bit of mail. If you guys saw, I did, I posted on Twitter, somebody sent me a book. I'll show you guys here too. Hello, close up of my face. Um, the book that I was sent was Pride. You guys know I read this book and really enjoyed it. It is a an African-American Pride and Prejudice retelling. 
I really, really loved it. Um, Unique sent it to me. I tagged her on Twitter if you guys want to follow her. I really like, she's like really active in the community and she really engages with a lot of people and I just truly love her. And she said that she knew I was having a really busy week so she wanted to send this to me and I am so excited. Also, it's beautiful. The inside of this book is gorgeous. I will leave in the cards up above the vlog that I did. I can't remember what I was reading it for, but there is a vlog that has this book in it and I really, really loved it. I think I gave it four stars. The other thing that I want to talk to you guys about, I came home and it was waiting for me and I'm really excited <clears throat> to show you guys this. So I was actually contacted by Unplugged Book Box. If you guys don't know what they are, they are a book subscription service. They have two options. They have adult and YA. I got the YA one. I'm actually really excited because what Unplugged Book Box focuses on, and I this is such a perfect box for me, it is a mental health box. So they focus on ways to unwind, ways to take care of yourself. Like the box really focuses on things like that. And I wanted to show you guys what I got because I don't know, I just I, I really feel like this box is probably perfect for people who follow me who want like a book subscription box, but also want something like mental health related it comes packaged really really well like so it has all of the like worms that are going to get all over my office but that's totally fine we're just gonna go ahead and get it over with and just throw these on the floor because I'm sure I'm gonna be finding these for like weeks to come so like I said it's packaged really really well and I'll leave all of their information down below if you guys are interested all the prices and stuff you can find all that on their website they'll be they also obviously have an Instagram but this is how it comes packaged it's really cute everything is like yellow and perfect so like I said this is a box that focuses a lot on mental health this is the spring equinox box for March and I have everything on the back but the first thing that I saw that I'm really kind of interested in is it has a playlist so if you want to listen to something while you're kind of using these items to unwind I think that's such a cool idea there's a lot of really cool bands on here that I've never heard of like Zella Day, Milky Chance, like Sir Sly I don't know who any of these people are but on the back of that there is a gratitude journal so it has the date and then it says how I'm feeling you know whatever out of 10 and then daily gratitude reflection. So today I get two and then there's a blank and you can kind of fill it in. And then it says I appreciate my roots because, and then there's a section for my strengths and how I use my strengths. So this is what it looks like. I think that is such a cool idea, honestly. As somebody who used to keep a gratitude journal but doesn't anymore, I'm actually really hyped to have this because I feel like it'd be a cool thing to, if you're having a particularly good day, to fill it out and then hang it up somewhere so you can remember kind of what you are thankful for. But I'm gonna go ahead and get into the box. The first thing that I see here is a Zelly used to achieve diviner magic. Oh, it's a creamy whipped soap. Ooh, this is cool. So this is what it looks like. Let's see here. So it says, clean up after you attempt to restore magic, but watch out for King Zeran. Zeli did the best she could with all she was dealt and persevered despite facing challenges. The soap is inspired by Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi and was created by Atlanta Body Culinary. I, yep, that's what I thought. Oh my God. It smells so, what does this smell like? I don't know what this smells like, but it smells delicious. So I'm gonna show you guys a close up. So this is what we're working with. I think, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it is, like I said, a whipped soap. And I'm such a fan of like bath time, shower time. Like every night that I get home or every night I come home from the gym, I always just love like taking really long showers or like a bath and like soaking. It's my favorite way to unwind. I didn't, when I did my mental health video, I didn't talk about, I kind of briefly touched on showering and how showering helps me wind down for bed, but really in life in general, it really helps me wind down. The next thing we have here, it says Makani, it's a little pink thing. What is this? When life took Makani Young from her homeland in Hawaii, she had to find her way and adapt to a new world where she knew no one. It's inspired by There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. Oh, so it says, this is a steamer. Oh, that's so cool. So this is one of those things that you put in your shower when you shower. So I, I'm sure you guys have probably seen them uh, like at Lush I think has them and other places have them where you put them in the bottom of your shower when you shower and it mixes with the steam and like usually people use it when they're sick. That is so cool. I'm totally gonna use that when I come home tonight. The next thing is kind of heavy. What is this? Yippee and Co. Bubbling Bath Salts. Oh, that's so cute. Gotta stay clean when you're a demon hunter on the go. Use these bath salts to soak in the tub or your feet and keep demons away. 
Um, Yippie and Co. created these just for Unplugged Book Box and is inspired by the Supernatural TV show. Oh my god. Okay, also, Supernatural just announced that their last season is going to be this season, and I, or next season, the 15th season, and I am so sad. I am such a Supernatural fangirl, so I'm just like devastated by the news, but this is a really cool way to be able to like kind of remember the show in a way. I can even think of the Yippie moment. Give me one second to get it open and I'll let you guys know what it smells like. It kind of smells like lavender and like, it's obviously like Epsom salts, which are my favorite. I have a ton of them that I usually bath with. This is so cool. So I like that it's bubbling as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this probably, I was gonna say tonight, but probably like a day off that I have where I can take like a full bath. Cause you know, I'm working a lot this week if you didn't know. All right, and the next thing we have here Kind of has a weird shape to it. Oh, oh, what is this? Oh, oh, that's so pretty. So it's a book art bookmark. Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so this says bloom here, bloom where you are planted, which is also the theme of this month. With this unique bookmark design, especially for unplugged book box by Margot of Book Art Bookmarks. The floral pendant will help perfectly mark your page. Wow, I cannot fucking read. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. That is really beautiful. I love that. And it's one of those ones that's like kind of stretchy. So you can put it like if you're trying to hold a page, you can put the rose on the outside to kind of pull that. That's super cool. It's so pretty. Also, it's my favorite color. So bonus points for that. All right, the next thing, I think it's the last thing, is the book. Look how adorably packaged this is. Like, I, I cannot. This is super freaking cute. All right, let's see what book we got. I, like, almost don't want to open it because it's so... It's Everything is packaged so freaking beautifully. Oh, my God! Okay, so... <laughs> Thank God my roommates at work or I would have woken him up. This is a book that I have been wanting. I am so excited to have this. Oh my God. Okay, so this is Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. Trisha Levenseller did Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen, which, Siren Queen, which is one of my favorite books that I read when I first started, like Bookstagram and Booktube. It is about a mermaid essentially a siren and this is a book that she wrote another book that she wrote that's a pure fantasy book and I am really excited so it says I must have dozed at some point because consciousness suddenly jolts through me my eyes are still closed but heat pelts into my face from the sun no not the sun the sun doesn't smell of blood and rot I hold perfectly still except for my hands which search my which search my lap for my axe bless the goddess it's still here I crack open one eye and unhinged Zeke and mouth is inches from my face tasting my breath a tongue lolls out and touches my chin. A cackle, so loud it hurts my ears, unleashes from its mouth. Fear f floods through all my limbs. I realize then that even if I don't have any answers, even if I don't know where to go or what to do, I know one thing. I don't want to die. My instincts kick in, and as quick as I can, I raise my axe and press the shaft between those gaping jaws. This is so cool. Oh, yay! And it comes with a signed book plate, obviously. comes with our dear reader letter, and it comes with... Something that says, complete after finishing Warrior of the Wild. Oh, that's cool. So on the back of this, it says, reading journal, I cannot talk today. Reading journal, Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. So date finished, initial thoughts, final thoughts, favorite character, least favorite character, favorite part, any complaints. That is awesome. That's a really cool thing to actually include because us as reviewers, a lot of people who get these kind of box are even just like, you know, people on booktube or bookstagram or whatever, Goodreads, we do tend to review pretty much everything that we read. So this is really cool to have that. So you can kind of write things down as you go. That is awesome. I'm like thoroughly impressed by this box actually, like thoroughly impressed. Uh, let's see, theme reveal for April 2019. It says, wash away your worries. So that is the theme for April. I'm also getting that box. So I'll be unboxing that in like a dedicated video, but I wanted to get this one up as soon as possible because I still have a bunch of boxes left. So I wanted to kind of put this out there. If anybody is interested in it, then they are still available. 
On the back of it, however, there's also a recipe. So this is the Inn at the Crossroads Game of Thrones Honey Cake Recipe. She still remembered the Inn Cape, a fat woman named Misha Heddle, who chewed a sour leaf night and day and seemed to have an endless supply of smile and sweet cakes for the children. The sweet cakes had been soaked with honey, rich and heavy on the tongue. That is awesome. Okay, so this is a recipe, obviously, for honey cake. It says prep times 10 minutes, rising one and a half hours, baking 15 minutes, and it serves 15 buns. That's really cool that so basically this box is to unwind so like I said it has the how you're feeling what you're thankful for kind of aspect of this and then it has things to really facilitate unwinding so you have obviously the items we got the seamer the bubble bath the bookmark the body scrub like you could take all of that into the shower and just have a really amazing shower and then you have a book to read to unwind it has a playlist like are you kidding me they, they curate a playlist and as somebody who's a really big fan of Spotify and doing that kind of thing on Spotify I can appreciate this as well as it has a recipe so say you get up you know earlier in the afternoon one day you make this recipe you go about your day you come home you hop in the bath and like relax and read and listen to this playlist and eat, and eat your honey buns that you made like this is such a cool idea when they reached out to me I was like yes this is totally on brand for me I would love to talk about this so like I said I'm gonna list all of the information down below if you guys do want to see kind of what it's about and if it's something that you'd be interested in um, I'm not really sure of prices but like I said all of that will be in the down bar for you guys but I love this. I think this is an amazing idea. I know that the girls said that their box, the adult box, is their best-selling one. So if you're interested in that, obviously that's there. And I know they do have some YA ones still left as well. I'm really glad that I got the YA one, actually, because this book, oh my god, I am so ready. Trisha has such a good, like, I don't know, very clean writing style, and I'm really excited to see how she does with like a fantasy setting. What does it look like naked, actually? Oh my god, this this cover is just beautiful. Oh, it's pretty. It's green and gray, and then there's like an embellishment on the front of it. That is gorgeous. But I really like this because the cover goes all the way over. There's like a forest setting. I'm excited. I'm glad I got this. I am so thankful that they sent this to me. I truly like, I'm at the I'm at like a tipping point with my mental health right now that could go one way or another for me and I'm trying to like reel it in and make sure that it doesn't become something bigger than it needs to be. So I'm trying to like focus on taking care of myself and this is perfect. This is a great way to unwind and really focus on your mental health. So I'm really excited. I'm going to keep all of this actually so that I can actually do the playlist and stuff because I feel like that's a really cool idea. But that's going to be it for this update, you guys. I need to get ready for work. It is almost 2 o'clock and I need to be at work by 3. So I love you dearly. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is going to be my last update for the week or tomorrow afternoon whenever I get around to updating because I'm going to be moving the vlogs back to Mondays because Mondays actually work better for me currently with my work schedule. Also, I applied for a second job or I have been applying for second jobs at other places because I am, I think I spoke about this yesterday, I'm going to be going to BookNet Fest and that is, I, I live in Ohio but obviously I need to buy hotel room, plane ticket, food, you know, we want to go to Harry Potter at Universal so we're trying, I'm trying to like save as much money as possible and pay off a bunch of things that drain my bank account every month like, you know, credit card bills or whatever. Um, so I'm looking for a second job so I'm trying to figure out with the available days that I have the best days to upload everything and my schedule I don't think will be changing again I feel like the Monday Wednesday Friday really worked for me I don't think I'm gonna cut down days but I definitely want to start doing more Spe like specific reading vlogs like reading one manga in particular I don't do 24-hour readathons because obviously I need to sleep that's something that's very important to me um but you know just like more day specific things like a full day of hanging out with me a full day of you know just like traveling around Columbus like those kinds of things that's what I really want to focus on and I feel like while I'm working that second job over the summer you're probably going to see a lot more of that and a lot less of like the sit down like these kind of videos where or not these kinds but you know the normal ones that I put up on my channel um, I want to be as thoughtful as possible and as concise as possible in the videos that I film but I also want and I want that content to be really great but I also want to give you guys a little bit more insight into me and focus a little bit less on those kinds of videos so 
that is what I'm going to be doing. Trying to make my channel just a little bit more personal, a little bit more like you're hanging out with me because that's always the best feedback that I get that when people watch my videos or they watch my vlogs or they watch you know, any, any kind of thing that I put up on, you know, Instagram, whatever, they really feel like they're hanging out with me. And that's something that I pride myself on. I pride myself on not getting on here and there being like a filter or a fucking, like I'm trying, you know what I mean? Like people get on and they get really nervous and they kind of like, we all did it. I did it at the beginning. I, I watch my old videos and I'm just like, that doesn't even sound like you, <laughs> but I want to try to you know, make it more or continue to make it as organic as possible. So that's why I want to start doing those kinds of videos, just like a hang out with me for a day kind of thing. It was actually incredibly, incredibly highly requested when I asked you guys on Twitter what kind of stuff you wanted to see from me. So there's gonna be a lot more of that coming over the summer. And it'll be nice because we can get out and do stuff over the summer because it might be 40 some degrees today, but there's no snow and the sun's out and there's no wind and like I could go out and do stuff today. But yeah, so enough rambling. I gotta get off here. I gotta go to work. I love you guys very dearly and I will see you in an update tomorrow, hopefully with more shit that I've actually read because I haven't uh, read a whole lot. And I, like I said, I have about a week and I have four books plus the one that I'm currently reading to finish before the week is over. So that's gonna be it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. not very far into the book but I wanted to kind of talk about it now that I've got a little bit more done so this is a three-part perspective book so it has let's see Malgus obviously I feel like these books should focus more on the actual Sith characters because that's what I'm really excited about um, the other person obviously Malgus is our Sith um, Aaron, who is a Jedi Knight, so obviously she is a Jedi, and then the character that it actually starts out with is named Zared. So I don't know what species Zared is, I don't know if he's a human or what, but he does um, t transport and stuff for a very seedy organization. So it is a triple perspective book, so it's a little bit weird so far, but I am really liking it. I like Malgus a lot because Malgus is a very typical Sith. He has like a Twi'lek slave lover and I don't know, like it's funny because my Sith character that I play in the video games also has a Twi'lek Sith lover slave technically, but I feel like their relationship is similar to how my relationship is with my Twi'lek. Like I don't treat her like shit or anything like that, but um, Malgus definitely like mouths off to her in front of people because they have to keep up a facade because it's a little, I know Sith have relationships because that's the difference between Jedi and Sith. Jedi don't have relationships. Like they have friendships and stuff, but they're really about sacrifice and, you know, for the force and it, they're not really all about like being married, which is why Revan was such a big deal because Revan is a Jedi, but he has a wife and it's, it's very black and white for them, but for Sith it's a little bit more gray. They do tend to have relationships, so it's a bit weird. Um, but I am really liking it. I'm loving the lore. Like, that's just my favorite part. That's just all my favorite parts of all of the Star Wars books. So that is what I'm thinking of it so far. I'm going to take a little bit more time to read before I need to go into work. I also brought with me, I forgot to mention, oh, by the way, look how adorable this sleeve is. It's got like TIE Fighters and R2-D2 on it and it's from Book Cozy, which I will leave um, Taylor's YouTube channel down below as well as the Instagram for this. I fucking love these, but I also brought with me Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. You guys know this was on my TBR as well, so I'm going to be trying to read that today. A little bit of that. My goal is to read about 100 pages of both, so I will see you guys later. Good morning. I am here to wrap up the vlog. It is Sunday morning. It is noon. I'm up a little bit early because I got called into work. Um, so tired. I didn't go to bed till like almost five in the morning, 4.45, something like that. But anyway, we're here to talk about good things. I did read a little bit more of both of my books. So my goal was to read 100 pages of each or deceived I'm on page 135 yesterday when I got to work I was on page like 64 I'm really interested in this book actually because Malgus is obviously 
I don't know, he really wants conflict because it tends to be that Sith crave conflict because Jedi try to, I mean, they have emotions, but they are a little bit more of, they try to harness them, like they try to rein them in and try to not let it cloud their judgment. Malgus, however, and the Sith tend to be very, they embrace their emotions. They tend to feed off their emotions. They tend to be generally pretty negative emotions as well. And it's interesting to see because one thing that's always really intrigued me about Sith is actually the internal politics. So really, <laughs> Sith are just there to fuck each other over. Like it is a hierarchy and it is dependent on how well you can break down your enemy, whether that be sabotage, whether that be murder, whatever. Malgus is not good at things like that. And there are people within the group that he's a part of when they're trying to take over that are trying, one is trying to replace him on Coruscant. And it's just, and like after the attack of Coruscant on the Jedi Temple, which is what happens in this book if you're familiar at all with the Old Republic lore, if you play the video game, there's actually apparently like a big like cinematic video that you can watch of the battle that actually happens in the beginning of this book that ties all of them together. But there's another Sith there who wants to take his place, another Darth. And it's actually, it's actually really interesting because Malgus is like, I am not good at things like this. Like he's, he's very much so like a, I will force choke you and kill you character to get what I want and not so much a tries to be secretive, you know, that kind of thing. So it's really interesting to watch. We're introduced to a fourth character. His name is Wrath. He works for the Hut cartel, which the Hut are a... I don't know, but I, you're familiar with the Hut, but essentially they are the mob of the Old Republic. They've always been like that. And he works for them because our one of our main character, Z-Man as they call him, or Zared, is transporting spice for another organization, another group, which for some reason I can't remember the name right off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, and he works, um, Wrath works for the Hut to prevent that from happening because they the Hut want to get people addicted to their spice because um, Zared is running spice, like I said, for the other organization and the Hut are like their competitors. So now we have another character and Aaron and Zared have finally met and they're trying to, there, there's something that brings them together but I don't really want to give that away because I feel like if you haven't played the video game or you really want to know, I feel like that's kind of an important thing that happens. Aaron so far is the most interesting character to me because she is battling light and dark choices at the same time and a character, a character type that I've really been interested in are gray characters or characters who are able to kind of maintain a middle balance between making light side decisions and dark side decisions and I'm basing that purely off of the game I don't know other than I would say Revan any particularly gray characters and I wouldn't say Revan is necessarily super gray either because if you don't know anything about Revan Revan actually loses his memory at one point in time becomes a Sith and then loses or he becomes a, he was a Jedi became a Sith lost his memory became a Jedi again and then he starts to remember things and it leaves him in a really weird like suspended like you know doesn't really know what he is or who he is um, which is why a lot of the decisions that he makes are more dark side decisions and it's like a blend of the two or when I say dark side decisions I mean not wholly Jedi decision but I'm really interested in this book. I think I like this book so far more than I liked the other one, the first one, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head right now. What was that one called? Deceived? No. What's it called? Whatever. The one that I read. I don't know why I can't find it. The last one that I read. I'll put a picture here on the screen for you guys. I really like... Oh, Revan. Duh, it was called Revan. Um, I really liked that one because I liked Scourge a lot, but I think that this is better because you get more of Malgus in a way. I feel like it has more depth. Also, these books are written by different authors, so throughout the entire universe, as you're reading these books, they are not all written by the same person. So this one is written by Paul Kemp. I don't remember who the other one, who... what Revan... like, who wrote Revan? Um, but yeah. Now, moving on to the other book that I'm reading. I am reading, I started Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. I am on page 275. There's a little over 400 pages. I read a boatload of this book yesterday. It's cute, uh, but I don't love it. And it's weird. I wonder when this was written. 
2018, so this isn't a new book. Um, so essentially, let's see. I issues that I have with this book. So, those are main character Macy and her boyfriend from when she was really little, Elliot. Macy's mom dies from cancer and leaves a. She, they have a super loving family. She has an amazing dad. Her mom leaves a note to her dad of a list of things that he needs to do, but not in a controlling kind of way, not in a way that she thinks he couldn't do it, but in a, she knows she's gonna be missing out and Macy's going to be missing her. And she wants him to, to do these things. And one of the things is when Macy starts to get so stressed out with school, you need to take her away for the weekend. Well, her dad, being the awesome human being that he is, decides to buy a, like a lake cabin house. I think it's kind of like, there's like a river, but picture like an old kind of cabin thing, but it's like a house. So they go there every weekend. And she falls in love or starts to fall in love with the boy next door. But the thing about Macy is she tends to keep people pretty distant. Her dad's like her best friend and her favorite person. And she has a few other friends, but you know, she's not super close with them. So she starts to fall for Elliot, and when they first meet, they're pretty young. I think they're like 13. He's like 14. He's a year older than her. Um, so there's a lot of time that this happens. The book flashes back. Like, you start with present-day Macy, which is 11, almost 12 years in the future of the last time her and Elliot met. So on their timeline, it's now focusing on the last 11 years. In the timeline of them when they're younger, it's when they meet and then the five years after that. So you flash back each chapter. It's told purely from Macy's perspective. You don't get a lot of, you don't get anything of Elliot other than like her interactions with him. The issues that I'm having with this book. I do not find Macy a likable character at all. Um, she is engaged to a man with a six-year-old daughter. He's suffering from divorce. His wife left because she got addicted to cocaine and then addicted to other drugs later on. And she's, I, I, Christina Lauren does a really good job of writing likable characters that you can really feel in a way, like they're very realistic. Like they have weight, you know what I mean? Like you can really, oh God, what am I trying to say? They have a lot of substance to them and I really like them. I have yet to read a Christina Lauren that I don't like. Elliot, I love. But the thing about Macy is she's such, she's not really an unlikable character in a way, but it's hard for me to relate or, you know, really enjoy her character because she does keep people so at like arm's length the entire time. She has a best friend here that she kind of does that with. She has obviously the guy that she's engaged to. But one day she meets Elliot again in a coffee shop. Like she runs into him and she essentially breaks down and leaves. And you don't know why, what happened to them and why they haven't talked. She says he made a really big mistake but I made a really big mistake too and I don't really know what they're referencing I think we're starting to get to the time though because when the timelines sort of converge like when they stopped talking was 11 years ago around Christmas New Year's and that's kind of where this is at so in the flashback that I'm at they're in like in the middle of January and in the flash or in the present day they're right before Christmas they're going to a wedding and it's a very interesting book, but the thing is, Elliot, when he sees her again, breaks up with his longtime girlfriend, who also used to be his friend, and she eventually does leave her husband, but it's like, it's a very, it's lacking. It's lacking depth for me. It's lacking character depth. It's lacking story depth. I feel like when we flash back to the previous years that they lived together when they were younger, you know, that they experienced together when they were younger. It's just missing something. It's missing the Christina Lauren spark for me. And I don't know if it's because the content in this is a little bit heavier because they do obviously talk about like her mom dying from cancer and then eventually her dad passes away. And it's just like, I don't, I'm, I'm not connecting with the story. It is lackluster compared to what I've been reading by them recently. It is pretty bland in a way. Now, obviously I'm liking it because I'm, I read 274 pages yesterday, but for me, Christina Lauren has been like a phenomenal knockout author. I loved my favorite half night stand. You guys know I love Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, but this book just, it is very 
kind of boring at times and I don't really care about the characters and I don't really care about the story and I'm interested to see kind of how they converge and I do like when Macy and Elliot are interacting not when they're younger but when they're older I do like that a lot but this is this is just a lack it just lacks for me I would probably give it about three stars unless something phenomenal happens and like the twist and it kind of explains Macy a little bit better I can understand why Macy is the way she is but I want it to be explained better um but yeah, that's what I'm thinking of it. I'm going to bring it with me to try to finish it today since I have to go <laughs> to work. I've been on, on overtime. Like, when I left last night, I was at 42 hours. Overtime is at 40 hours. And now I have, like, a six-hour shift that, or four-hour shift, however much, that I need to go into work and work. So I'm going to get off here. I love you guys. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Monday if you're watching this on Monday. If you're not watching this on Monday, I hope you have a fantastic whatever day you're landing on. I'm going to come home tonight, edit this vlog, go to the gym, do whatever, but I'm going to start tomorrow or next week's vlog right now. So I love you guys a lot. I really do. Thank you for bearing with me while I'm switching my filming schedules around. It's been pretty wild. Um, but yeah, I love you guys. And I will see you in... Wednesday's videos. Now this is going up on a Monday. I'll see you in Wednesday's video.